Hi, my name is Jenny Castle and I'm the curator at the Art Center in Corvallis, Oregon. Today I'm here talking with Sarah Kayampa, who is a painter who living and working in Eugene, Oregon. Sarah earned her Bachelor of Arts from the University of Oregon in 2006, has shown her work nationally, and is currently represented by Salem on the Edge Gallery in Salem, Oregon. Sarah, welcome. Thank you, Jenny. I'm really happy to be here. Much appreciated. Um, and I think I'm going to just say a couple things about um, my background with art, other than what you just covered, which is accurate. Um, so the first thing I wanted to say is that I've been into art all of my life. My mom was an artist and was a phenomenal ceramicist. So I grew up playing with clay before I could even walk. She would take me to her college courses in ceramics in one of the little backpacks when I was really tiny and she'd throw on the wheel with me. So I got into it pretty early. Um, I was into drawing and sculpting when I was younger and then um, I didn't actually get into painting until I was 23, 24 and I took my first oil painting class at Lane Community College, um, actually with Satoko Motoguji, who is still in town and we're still connected, which is pretty cool that 20 some years later, we're, we're still buddies. So that's really nice. Um, and then, yes, as you said, I went on to get a BA of Fine Arts in uh, at the U of O and I focused on drawing, painting and sculptural ceramics. And since then I've been um, a practicing artist for 18 years. So that's what I want to say. <laughs> I love that. I love that your like, community is so important and it's great that you've been able to maintain those relationships and push your artwork forward. Mm -hmm. um, you, will you talk a little bit about the work currently um, on display at the Art Center mm -hmm. and the Corinne Woodman Gallery? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the show that's on display now is called Natura and it has eight pieces in it. It actually, when I applied for the show, it actually had 12, um, but partly due to the space, because the Kareem Woodman Gallery is a very nice, intimate space, it was pared down to these eight that I feel are really strong. And the other ones um, showed at galleries over the past few years, and some of them have sold. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the synopsis of the, of the show. Yeah. Um, in your artist statement about this work, you state that the work attempts to grasp the ungrasp ungraspable, <laughs> you can get that out. Um, can you speak a little bit more about what that means to you and why you feel it's important to make artwork that's attempting to do those things? Yeah, I thought it was really interesting that you, that you um, had that stand out to you in the artist statement. Um, and I, I really appreciate that you're asking about it. So. Uh, yeah, I have a little bit of a prepared um, answer for that. So for this body of work, I was focusing on painting natural objects that I was setting up in very specific ways in my studio. In doing that, there's a certain artificiality of what I'm doing and what I'm presenting as everything I'm setting up about nature um, is basically staged and manipulated by me. So I think a lot of people would relate to the idea that part of what we love about our experiences in nature is that things are not set up or staged for us by other humans as so much of the rest of our lives are. And that that experience of non-manipulation is precious. So when I'm talking about attempting to grasp the ungraspable, this is part of what I'm referencing, the basic conundrum of trying to manipulate things in a work of art so that they express something about our unmanipulated experiences. Um, I would equate grasp with manipulate and ungraspable with unmanipulated. Um, I attend a Buddhist temple in Eugene and at the time that I was writing my artist statement for this show, our head priest gave a really moving and profound talk about being in nature and relating to nature in a way other than our usual subject object way of being in life. Uh, what he was saying really resonated with me and I felt like it fit the body of work I had created for Natura and why I had created it. Um, I don't remember if he used the exact phrase of attempting to grasp the ungraspable, but if not, I know he said something very similar. Um, so that phrase is also related to core Buddhist concepts of relational awareness in life, where there's not a subject 
experiencing an object, but interdependent mutual arising of experience. Well, it's really interesting that you have that um, relationship with your work and then choose to paint still lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's a very, yeah, very interesting um, uh, approach. Um, and it's like, and I love the, I love the idea that both things can be true. It's like, you have this, um, spiritual connection with why you're making the work and then the process might contradict that in some ways, which complicates it. Um, so can you speak a little bit on why you choose, um, still lives as, um, your method of painting, um, and, and how you're pushing, um, an approach that has a long history forward and how you're referencing history in your work. Yeah, and thank you for, for asking about that also. So again, I have kind of a prepared thought on that. And first of all, interesting that you would pick up on how there's some maybe seemingly dissonance between the experience and the practice and things like that, because I would never have thought, especially when I was younger, that I was going to end up committed and interested in still life paintings. Um, when I started painting in my 20s, my work was radically different. It was very large a lot of the time. It was abstract, it was surrealist, it was very colorful, and it was influenced a lot by my instructors from school and what their styles were and that, what I was taught. Um, but as I grew as a painter and I gained more control over my technique, I realized that the art I really wanted to paint that really fascinated me in part because of the process was extremely detailed still life work. Um, the process of painting in this utterly absorbing way is amazing for me. Um, it can be difficult and hard at times, um, but I like the process of diving in the, into the details of something and coming back to it over and over. Um, and as far as the work that's produced, I love still life because it's quiet and contemplative, um, but, Let's see, it can also be very surprising. And sometimes the meaning sort of comes on as like a slow burn when you have to wait a little while and see it a few times before it hits you as to what it's trying to say or what it is saying, and it can change. Art is very much a mirror for people. It's not just what you're looking at, it's what you're projecting onto what you see. And I think still life people maybe can feel that even more when they see something more than once. Um, I also like how well still life can represent a culture and a time and place. Um, and I love to use objects to express deeper concepts than just what the objects are. Uh, symbolism has always been part of still life painting. And I find it truly fascinating to attempt to create modern symbolic still life paintings because I think shared symbolism is more of a subliminal thing in our current society. So it's interesting to see what people can relate to. Um, I hope I'm pushing still life painting forward by breaking the boundaries of what should be art and questioning what we value. Um, I think a Ziploc bag should be art because it's part of our lives and it means something. Um, trash that I find on the ground, shells that I collect at the beach, candy from the dollar store, a vase from the strip thrift store, all of those things are equally art and equally still life subjects for me. Um, and I think the detailed style that I paint in along with painting from live observation is what relates my work to the history of still life painting. And that is in part because I think those traditional ways of painting and creating art are beautiful and meaningful and have longevity um, that is not just a passing phase. Um, I can relate to classical realist still life art painted 500 years ago because of the mastery they were painted with. So I believe wholeheartedly that mastery is a vehicle for communication. Thank you. That was such a thoughtful answer. And I had so many thoughts in between. <laughs> well, <it's okay. laughs> I, yeah, I, um, yeah, I think about the the symbols that we learn about in art history that are in still life paintings from, you know, hundreds of years ago. And I find it interesting to think about what future people would look back at, like your still life painting and be like, well, why mm -hmm. is that hard candy important? And what does it mean? Right. <laughs> yeah, um, I, you posted um, 
a painting that's not currently in the Corinne Woodman on your Instagram recently. And I absolutely loved it. Like it was blackberries and candy mm-hmm. strewn around. Um, mm-hmm. So I encourage anyone listening to check out yeah. <laughs> Sarah's website and um, social media as well for more work. Um, so you mentioned in the past, you painted large and boldly with bright colors and the palette in this collection is very subtle. Um, Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how color choice is incorporated into your painting and why you chose the color palette you did for this, for this body of work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I tend to paint with a limited palette, um, usually of titanium white, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, some sort of oxide red, a dark umber brown, and occasionally other primaries if needed. So I'll branch into like brighter primaries and things sometimes. Um, For the most of this palette was that core limited palette. Um, And this adds to the color harmony of the works. Um, And these are colors also that resonate with me. Um, For this series, I often felt like I was drawn to a palette palette related to the sky in various shades. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, The background in uh, Patterns, one of the paintings and another painting called Remnants um, directly references the sky and sky colors. Um, I think the other works have a reference to that in more subtle ways as well. Um, And I think the color choices are about the experience of reflection. Sometimes it's somber, even melancholy. Sometimes it's delicate and light. And sometimes it's it's dark and deep and mysterious. So not entirely sure why I felt drawn to the sky colors with this, but but it all felt right. It all came together. Yeah. Well, and you made this work during the pandemic, correct? So you're probably, yeah, feeling solitary a lot of the time as many of us were. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and yeah, the none of the work at like really overtly addresses the pandemic. Some of my other still lives absolutely overtly reference it. I have one, I have still lives I painted with masks in them and things like that, that, you know, to me, that's like historical documentation. Um, But this one, yeah, this series, it, they were happening during the pandemic and there, yeah, there was a lot about being alone and and being able to be out in nature, which I'm very lucky to do. I live on a property where I am surrounded by wooded spaces. And um, it, it was amazing to get to have that. And so I, it's always part of my work to reference nature and sort of what we consider our human world versus our natural world, even though they're all the same thing. I think we reference them psychologically as separate things a lot of the time. Um, so this just became even more overt in what I was focusing on for this series. It's yeah. wonderful. Um, well, those were all the prepared questions I had. I think that this body of work is very deep and there's a lot of um, other things we could discuss. Um, mm-hmm. And th- this, this video will be posted um, to our website. And if people have questions for Sarah, they're welcome to write us an email or post them on YouTube and we can try to get some answers for you. Um, Sarah, is there anything else you wanna add before we um, conclude? Um, Well, first of all, thank you, Jenny, for doing this. I really appreciate this, a very thoughtful set of questions and this lovely interview. And um, I really appreciate being able to show at the Kareem Woodman Gallery. It's, it's, I've shown in group shows before at the, um, the Art Center in Corvallis. And it's just really an honor to get to have my little solo show there. I really appreciate it. And I love this body of work. So I'm glad that it's there and I hope lots of people will get to see it. Um, and the other thing to add is just that if people would like to see more of my artwork, um, online or through you know digital means um my website is my name so sarahkayampa.com which hopefully you can see on the screen here um and then um i'm also on instagram at artist sarah Kayampa. so check it out and thank you thank you um and i will point out sarah's work is up um at the art center in the corinne woodman gallery through november 19th Um, and experiencing it in person is very special. Um, We didn't touch on it, but um, the the surface of the paintings are very unique and very delicate. And I think it's 
a completely different experience to see it um, in a gallery versus um, digitally uh, recreated online. So I hope that um, people who are interested have a chance to stop by the gallery um, before November 19th. Um, and the, the Art Center is open Tuesday through Saturday, 12 to five, um, and it's free to attend the Art Center. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you at the reception in a, in a week. Yes, absolutely. So that's October 20th, yes? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Looking Wonderful. forward to it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're Bye. welcome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.